Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So part two of Volcanic Visions Battle Pass is now live. You can currently make progress on Heartleaf's Hope. Those of you who do not have the premium pass will now no longer be able to make any further progress on the previous part, the first one. However, if you do get the premium pass like I will actually do in this video, you'll be able to continue your progress on the previous parts and claim all of those premium rewards. Now to just quickly cover what's new with this second part, you can see the rewards on the free track is just five greater shards, a very interesting volcanic artifact choice pack. This is going to have a bunch of upgraded versions of like your staff of flowers, music box, strobians, ring and erratic drift globe. All of those I'm going to check out in a later video in a few days. I'll post that and you'll be able to see which ones potentially you should pick from there. Again, as you can see via the description of this pack, they'll have a 1,800 item level and mythic quality, which is the best of any in the game. I'm gonna hope that you'll be able to unbind them like with the Sentinel of Water artifact. But again, that'll have to wait for another video. Right now, I actually want to go and check out Eric the Cavalier, a very interesting companion with a super unique bonus that, which can actually be very useful but having a quick look at the other rewards here just two enchanted keys just 300 insignia powder which actually not a bad amount and then if you do get the premium pass here base cost 2500 zen you can get a discount on that i'll show you but yeah just 10 greater shards a volcanic illusion choice pack with fire burst flaming bronze wood loam weave none are really great there i guess the loam weave is the most exclusive as it costs like th nearly 3.5 million on the auction house right now and the rest are a far far more cheaper like fire burst 700 800k basically flaming also like 800 900k and bronze wood illusion like 200k so absolutely apparently loam weave is the best there we'll also check that out in a later video and i'll just showcase those but i have in this video gone over every single illusion in the game and you can then look up that and compare basically versus all the others in case you wanted to ultimately have something entirely different to use but yes then just four enchanted keys in a cool mode overall the premium pass is not actually the worst deal 2500 zen you can get that down to 2000 zen i'll just show you but you're getting in this this part alone an illusion where it's supposedly three million by the players because it's pretty exclusive uh, a call mode here 10 shards there four keys here on the first part another four keys master lock boxes more shards here an exclusive companion and on the last part you get a whole bunch of upgrade tokens a mount choice pack another call mode and like some premium lock boxes with some more keys and so yeah you could definitely spend 2000 zen on a lot worse things again let's show you exactly how we can buy this for 2000 zen i have made previous videos covering exactly how you can get at least 20 percent off anything in the zen market so with 2000 zen we need that discount let's go and open these celestial bags of refining simply obtained through invoking every day as you can see you get like four of them there so let's try our luck here we we have a lot of these bags and with our luck we actually had to open 67 packs you can see the amount of other coupons we did obtain but yes this coupon then does work with unlocking the premium pass 2000 zen for that and again you get like two call modes and a bunch of exclusive stuff so let's do it there we go we can check out the previous part where we did get all the xp for it and we can claim all of those rewards those keys the log boxes the shards and yes that new companion if you're not aware he's supposedly part of the gang that is to do with the dungeons and dragons cartoons that were actually aired like a few decades ago by now now very nicely he is indeed account wide so you'll be able to make use of him on 
any character he will give you the bonus of enduring guard which is nice reliable amount of defense maximum is five percent and then the defense power here i'm just a little adventurer when you receive damage you stun the target for three seconds and you reduce all your threat by 90 percent that is kind of huge and the cooldown is only 10 seconds for his stats and abilities, you can see what he can do here, but he can shield all allies for 5% of their maximum hit points, and he has a bit of a CC effect with knocking down enemies. So let's get him equipped and check him out. Again, with a mythic companion summoned, Enduring Guard gives that 5%. You don't even have to upgrade him. Very useful if you just want that stable boost to your defensive stats. But yes, we can get him summoned here, and this is what he looks like there. Just standing casually around. You can let me guys know if you've seen the cartoons. Do they represent him well enough in the game here? I have no clue. I have not seen the cartoons. So let's check his effectiveness in combat, particularly against one enemy. And we'll have a look in multi-target how's that stun effect and also check out how this actually works reducing all your threat by 90 percent of course not something i would use on a tank as it's kind of counterproductive but definitely useful on a damage dealer who wants to avoid getting hit and then a tank and then potentially a healer who is struggling with their heals drawing too much threat so we can see him in the fight just here basically just using his shield to attack which is kind of odd to see but pretty cool i guess and he's just bashing his enemy has no other main hand weapon he does have some super cool ability this right here visually that's kind of crazy that's it here again and otherwise he does have that knockdown effect just here. But let's have a look how effective is he in actually dealing damage. I assume not very good if he's going to be a hybrid. He's got some support, he's got some multi-target damage, and he's got some single target damage. Usually companions that have a mix aren't the best at anything. But yes, you can see that 5% shield is working. It's not going to be a whole lot but it will stack with other player generated shields, which is a good thing. So five minutes later, you can see his DPS there, it's about just over 35,000, getting out his big hit just before we end the log, 35,900 DPS. We can add him to my single target document and rank him, and we find he'll be in about rank 40. Not too bad, to be honest, for a support companion, Again, giving that 5% extra shield. If you look at other companions that also give shield, they're the same. They've been balanced all to 5% and stack with other player shields. But the problem I find is it doesn't have 100% uptime. It only has a 10 second duration. You can see that again just here, 10 seconds. And if you look at the Diva Champion, he doesn't actually have a buff for his shield effect, but we can time it then. We can see it does drop off and then he pretty much instantly puts it back up again. So he'd, he'd be a better guy for providing that shield reliably, but his damage output is a bit less. Overall, I wouldn't really use him as summon, to be honest, in terms of single target. So let's have a look at a multi-target then with that Griffin's Cry attack. So we can go to this group of enemies here and um, let them attack me and see how the companion reacts. He instantly does that area, knocking them down. Just a bit of damage, not much to be honest. Gives me a bit of shield, which is pretty much instantly gone. And uh, then he's just attacking one at a time here, doing his area again, knocking them down. And uh, takes quite a while to be honest. Definitely not the best here. For the comparison, let's have a look at what the Minotaur Mercenary does. We go in combat here, immediately does that pull effect. He did actually grab the guys from the other area, but then he starts swinging here and can kill them all pretty easily. He already killed the entire first group, and these guys are just late covers to the fight. So again, I wouldn't rate him too highly for multi-target damage either.
he'll get the job done that knockdown effect is somewhat useful for CCing them causing them to not attack interrupting them but it doesn't exactly last very long and the barrier is only five percent what i'm most interested in is the particular bonus i'm just a little adventurer reducing your threat by 90 percent seems kind of crazy that's basically i've done a million damage reduce my threat by 90 percent the enemies only think i done 100k damage that's like massive difference so you could easily at least what i can assume have your companion take the threat instead of you i think the easiest way to demonstrate this is going to be in single target you have a boss that you have to beat up i tried checking in multi-target but I either kill them too quick or the companion just doesn't really do enough damage compared to what I do. In single target, the fight will last a bit longer and it'll give a chance for that bonus to trigger like multiple times. We'll summon like Suna here for this example. We slot in that bonus just here. So we'll go straight in with say like an artifact call here. Let's do our full burst rotation. And this bonus should be able to trigger a few times. Let's see, can the companion get the damage or the threat off me if I continue the attack? Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> it triggered and our threat is like 25% of the companion. That is just crazy after we've done this much damage to the boss which is probably like over a hundred million and now the companion has threat if we do check the log we can actually see we dealt 66 million damage and the companion dealt 10 million damage but yes we were way in the green there this bonus completely works i mean it's probably not going to work that efficiently at the beginning of the fight which is kind of where you want it it might right if you if you're against the boss which is not just going to one shot you and it hits you once it's very likely the tank's going to instantly get the aggro back because now your threat is reduced by 90 percent so if you're running content with randoms and you don't really trust the tank or you're having issues where you're taking the threat this can be a game changer you won't have to worry about the threat whatsoever if the tank sure is so bad then at least they're going to attack somebody else and not you especially if there's even like some mechanics that you can take a little bit of a hit from you instantly reduce your threat in that fight massively it can also lead to somewhat of an exploitive behavior by playing without a tank and relying on companions to take the threat for you you just take some with high damage and uh, you can see they can absolutely take the threat from you the only issue of course is uh you're gonna have to keep them alive and it's probably harder as a healer to keep a companion alive versus a tank but still having like a fourth dps in a dungeon can be pretty pretty huge i guess the only issue again is uh positioning you can't exactly coordinate where your companion is going to position and they can't really play mechanics properly but sure it can be interesting what we can make use of this it does rely on those say you're like your whole team using it otherwise you may expect to see a nerf to the cooldown on this making it like 30 per seconds or a minute if it becomes an issue with people exploiting it but overall it is a super unique ability that actually works i'm surprised it has such a low cooldown of only 10 seconds and a massive 90 percent reduction to your threat that makes it like super effective and actually useful you'll absolutely notice when this triggers and you just completely lose all the threat of everything to your other players even your companion at some points ultimately do i recommend you get the battle pass well i would literally only do so to get the new companion and on top of that only for this equip bonus the rest of his kit is uh, not that useful to be honest sure he has that equip bonus giving the reliable defense but in most cases you'll want to be using like armor break dull senses weapon break advantage nullification there's quite a few bonuses which are a lot more effective in the way that you support the entire team and not just yourself so once again thanks for watching a special thanks to all these channel members for your extra support and we'll see you guys around goodbye for now